we talk about constantly and always bring it up, but I think the guest is super underrated. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and you can tell kind of your next was kind of his, his, um, you, you know, his foot in the door is, is a first, first time director. And you can tell that from your next to the guest, like he brought the sound, the fucking music, the everything about it is, um, it's fucking dope. So yeah, I would say the guest. Okay, I can respect about, that, Dan Steven. What about you? <laughs> hey, um, Dan, hey, fucking the beast, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally <laughs> agree with you um, on the fact that those two movies really do complement each other and kind of show him crafting his uh, his own voice as far as film. Um, mm-hmm. Especially with the music, we know he's a big, obviously, 80s kind of synth guy, and, and, and I feel like that... Um, style is really used <clears throat> in your in your next in a really cool unique way because you're not expecting it because you know you have this weirdo family and there's not much music it's very repressed until the shit starts to hit the fan and then you get a lot of the synthy stuff and 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 it does a wonders way more than you would ever think to create this weird um atmospheric tone for the for the film but going back to your question what is my favorite adam wingard uh film i'm gonna have a hot take and say his vision of the blair witch in my opinion ran circles around the original and um Ooh. and i love it <laughs> <laughs> And we did a uh, we did a double. Me and James, and this was one of the I want to say first or second year we were doing the show. We did a double bill where we reviewed the first Blair Witch and uh, and then immediately watched the uh, the new one the, or the newer mm-hmm. one. And um, man, the first one I know it was shot for nothing, but it just does not hold up uh, for me in the slightest. So I, I'm sorry if I let you down there, Ryan. <laughs> um, well, you know, for all the listeners out there, <laughs> you can um, on 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 Tuesday, September 13th, you can buy a ticket to go see Go at, at um, Digital Gym, and and you can beat Wes up for saying what he just said right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I can't talk. I can't talk to you. I haven't seen the original in, in fucking years. Um, but no, dude, the first one, I, did you see it in theater? I mean, the second one, did you see it in theaters? I saw it like four times in the theaters. I think. Yeah, I saw it opening night. And yeah, that was, it was a good, good, um, it was a good watch with a, with a big group, of, a big audience. And I, I loved it. I just, I think I like the guest a little bit more. But I mean, I, that's not too much of a hot take, I don't think. I, I just feel like because it's essentially doing what the original did with a bigger budget and um, and incorporating technology. They have the drones and stuff, but mm-hmm. the way that it's written and executed and the acting is just. I can buy it more, and I feel like they flesh out the uni- that universe as much as you can, of course, in that mm-hmm. in that kind of small space of a story. It just it scared it like literally it, it it legitimately scared me in the theater. And being of someone who who watches horror movies or just like weird movies in general all the time, after a while, you know, people like us start to get desensitized to things. So mm-hmm. I, I always um, love when a filmmaker is able to tap into this that that kind of <clears throat> instinctual th- uh, thing that 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 really can affect somebody. Um, so I was just really really happy that I got to see it uh, in the cinema, and like I said, yeah, I stand behind it. <laughs> I think it's better. And it, it, it gets shit on a lot for some reason, but oh man, it's just 
very very scary and shout out to that video game that came out a couple years ago that is really good too check that out i, n- I never played that it's a very much like a puzzle game. I feel like it's probably like how uh, that stray game is set up. Oh, okay. Because you have a dog and stuff, um, but obviously just set in this scary-ass world that really, uh, like, I loved playing it, but it gave me this sense of dread where I was just like, oh, shit, like, what am, <laughs> what am I going to get into now, you know? Uh, um, it's crazy that I mean it's not too crazy, but Simon Bear wrote that as well, right? Yes, he did. It's crazy because you think with the the amount of like great horror flicks that he's put out, um, you you think that he would be doing more? Um, because I mean, other than the, I mean, it's the Blair Witch, the Guest, and Your Next, and then. The stuff with VHS, there hasn't been anything else other than Death Note and Godzilla. Yeah, which it seems like he's now stepping into, okay, now I've made a name for myself so I can do like these big budgeted things, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it seems like he's got his foot in the door, and, and but I do hope he returns um, to do some, some more underground stuff again because i enjoy his uh his vision uh mm-hmm. as a director and and simon as a writer i feel like they're a great team and and they create um awesome stuff and what do you think about the uh the kills in this do you like them oh, oh yeah dude they're fucking gnarly i mean obviously the best one is, is the blender right <laughs> yeah like and you don't expect that to happen like you expect it to you expect her to just like hit him with it throw it on the top and 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 that's it but then she fucking goes for the plug and you're like oh no um and you just see like fucking just a fountain of fucking blood (laughs) yeah it's very Um, it's very uh last house on the left ish (laughs) (laughs) that kill um but yeah, dude, they're good. They're good kills. And then the um, another one that stuck with me, dude. This is gonna sound really weird, but every time I have seen like a meat tenderizer or whatever, like you kind of mean that, you kind of think to yourself, like, man, this would fucking be terrible to be hit with, or even to like step on or stub your toe on, and then she fucking beats the shit out of that guy with the tenderizer. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like they. Could stretch that out so much, <laughs> and but you love every bit of it because this guy, the um, the family members who is it's like the brother and then his girlfriend or wife is it seems she they're it seems like they're in on it at this point and they're kind of, they kind of set up Aaron to be murdered. Because they don't know that Aaron has, like, that she was raped. Because she kept it a secret from um, her her boyfriend. What's his name? Uh, Cl- oh, uh, Crispin. Bu- 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 Crispin, yeah. Yeah, because she, she, she mentions it that she kept um, her childhood, like, uh, a secret even from Chris- Crispin. So nobody knew that she was raised on a survival compound. Uh, like l- legitimately and so when this you know one of the killers comes through uh was the dining room window the the two family members pretty much just kind of stand back and they're expecting her to be taken out and she flips the script and just annihilates this dude takes out his kneecap um like smashes him over the head and he's wailing in pain he would have probably been out of commission already at that point <laughs> but she just goes to town way way overkill just bashes the sh- his fucking head in with the uh the as you said the the what looks like a meat tenderizer yeah and, and then and then she like takes his mask off and she's like does anybody recognize this guy <laughs> and then the dude's like well it's kind of hard to tell now or <laughs> <laughs> But you see that they're just like staring at her, like, "What the fuck is going on?" And that's a 
pretty much like the tone is set for the rest of the movie. And like I said in my write-up, it, it, it's very impressive and a huge swing that they just really get in into the thick of things like minutes probably like i want to say 20 25 minutes in people start getting killed off to the point where you're like okay this is moving a little too fast like <laughs> is this a short film like what is you know what is happening here um what i loved in the beginning when the family are all like they're bickering at, at the uh the dinner table um and one of the guys is it the the the, the documentary filmmaker to read yeah the, the daughter's yeah the daughter's um boyfriend who's it's fucking ty west right? <laughs> yeah it's ty west <laughs> he walks over to the window because he's like he sees something weird and no one's paying attention because they're bus- busy bickering and arguing with each other and he gets shot in the eye uh from a crossbow and you know, and the the way that it's again, the execution of it, where he turns around, and then everybody slowly starts to realize that he's injured and and dying, and then you know, and then from that point on, the movie just like loses his, sh- it loses its shit, and any nobody is safe. It's like Game of Thrones up in that house. I think I counted. Um, I want to say like. Halfway through the movie, everyone's dead except for like three people. Like, that's how fast it, <laughs> yeah, where, it moves. And when you realize that it's the fam, like certain family members had set up set up this this kind of family gathering in order to kill the people that they need to to get the inheritance. Um, it's um. I don't know. Have you had you ever heard of that, like a, a twist like that, where they use something involving, like it was an inside job in that way before this movie? I I can't recall like anything regarding like that. Um, can Can we talk about how uh, what's her name who plays Aaron? Sharni. Uh, Sharni. Vincent. Yes. Like. I think I thought she was a great final girl. Yes, and she never really did anything else after that. Like I don't, I, there's nothing really big on her resume. Why do you? I, why do you think that is? I don't know. I mean, I think I like researching stuff for the movie. Like, there's just a couple like I want to say like B movie type like direct, direct to 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 Blu-ray or DVD stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. Like Blue Crush Two and shit. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know, dude. I, I really liked her performance, and I thought she was a fucking awesome final girl. And that fucking scene with her in the window and the axe is kind of super iconic, at least to me. Oh no, yeah, yeah, for sure. I know what you're, you're talking about. I 100% agree with you. I think that if she hadn't been, um like on her a game for this it wouldn't have the longevity that it has now where you like we watched it and we loved it the same way and i hadn't seen this like, i love this movie but i hadn't seen it in a, a few years mm-hmm. um and uh, re-watching it i was just like damn this is like really good and a thing that i feel like is gonna keep it going where it feels ultra realistic in a lot of ways is the fact that they didn't rely on cgi they didn't cop out and try to save money by using putting in digital kills everything is is real you know yeah i think i think it um and i think if it was like there was any cgi or or anything like that in the kills it would have not made the movie feel so um as authentic as it does because the kills are fucking gnarly like the like um when she when the the daughter runs out of the door and you legit just see the fucking you see her the piano the, wire uh, yeah just kind of fucking slice her throat open and you see it like 
fucking why on on the screen full screen is is dope. So yeah, I definitely think that 